Hi, it's Lee Harding for Lee TV. Today, August the 19th, has been a remarkable day for Canadians on the internet. On YouTube, I want to start out with Pierre Polyev. He's a little bit ticked off and he's got good reason to be. Let's see that. All the substance is backed out, blacked out. And that would not be the first time. Next page, blacked out. This page, blacked out. This page, blacked out. This page, blacked out. Why don't we ask what's in those pages at a parliamentary committee? Well, I'll tell you why. Justin Trudeau shut down those parliamentary committees. When did he do it? The same day these documents became public. Oh, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Well, that's not the only disappointing political news we had today. Listen to the new finance minister. What do you make of that, Krista? Well, I would say amen to raising taxes. I would say amen to raising taxes. Amen to raising taxes. Boy, did you catch that? I did. I, uh, I don't really like it. Hey, look at this ASMR. This is autonomous sensory meridian response, a relaxing, often sedative sensation that begins on the scalp and moves down the body. Okay, well, Rebel Media just had one of those today, and uh, it's from Nicole Arbor. Now, we get this little warning here. Uh-oh, graphic language. Yeah, well, it uh, was very interesting. Called this is reality. If you're sick of looking stupid in front of your friends, just get dumber friends. You're welcome. Have you ever wondered what boobs sound like? Hmm. It's probably that. I'm Nicole Harbour, and this was reality. ASMR. I'm an idiot professionally. What do you do? An idiot professionally. We can think of some other people that are professional idiots too. The uh, most interesting of the comments, perhaps thankfully, were removed. Although there's still a few good ones. <laughs> yeah. You uh, won't find any Antifa girls looking like this, I can assure you of that. Way hotter and way funnier than Amy Schumer. A whole nother three levels. Hmm. Now I may start contributing money to Rebel News. <laughs> yeah, okay. We're still not entirely sure what that was. Now, this is uh, disturbing. Here is Laura Lynn Tyler Thompson interviewing April, April Lejeune. Now, as you may or may not know, there was actually a court case recently where people wanted the evidence preserved from the Picton Farm because they've come to believe that there's more going on there than was previously or commonly thought. Frank Gustra is also the founder of Uranium One. Okay, so let's go back to the Picton Pig Farm for a minute. The Picton Pig Farm, all of these people around the world, the Clintons, um, uh, Epstein, all of these people are, are involved in human trafficking. We already know that. But the fact that the Clintons were involved with Frank Gustra, who has to do with Lionsgate, and Lionsgate once has to do with the Greek Life Films, which is a snuff film producing company, obviously they had to do something with the bodies. So what they did is they used the Picton Pig Farm to dump the bodies. So when they say that these people were prostitutes and things, they may have been prostitutes, some of them, but many of them were human trafficked. I don't think 46 is the correct number. I think it could be thousands. Wow, uh, and we just that's don't a know. terrible thought. And I you know, I was really glad at the time that they had decided to have a media blackout on that whole trial because I thought I don't want to hear about a guy who killed a bunch of women and, and buried them at his place and have that on the news day after day and having all our minds go there. But now I, I wish that there had been some more scrutiny on this to see if there was more going on. Leave it to the viewer to decide. You know, this was interesting. I was looking up this Yuri Bezmenov to write an article about him and discovered that on this very day, Yuri Bezmenov is in a video. Now, Bezmenov actually emigrated from Russia. He defected from Soviet Russia because he was a KGB operative who was doing psychological operations abroad, as many people were that were with media organizations from the state-run media. 
and he defected to Canada in 1970. And now his words are actually used to set up a Cold War era version called Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. So this video is unlisted, but through websites like this, you can get to it. So check this out. Even though it's unlisted, we have got a whole ton of viewers. There's like 406,000 viewers, and it just debuted today. So that's more than all of the ones put together that we've seen so far. So here are the words of Besmanov, who was interviewed by G. Edward Griffin, who was the author of <clears throat> uh, the uh, Monster from Jekyll Island, which was all about the creation of the Federal Reserve. So he interviews him in 1984. It first aired in 85 and comes to us now. Going on around, you are in a state of war, and you have precious little time to save yourself. Yeah, lovely. Okay, let's let's move forward a bit. It's a slow process, which we call active measures. The first stage being demoralization. It takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize a nation. The next stage is destabilization. What matters is essentials. Economy, foreign relations, defense systems. The next stage is crisis. With a violent change of power, structure, and economy, period of normalization. Normalization. This is what will happen in the United States if you allow all the schmucks to put a big brother government in Washington, D.C., who will promise lots of things, never mind whether the promises are fulfilled or not. Yeah. Lovely thought. Amazing Polly hits it out of the park again today. Listen to this. There's two narratives. The first narrative is the official narrative that this is a deadly pandemic and we all need to be afraid. There's millions of people uh, been diagnosed positive and hundreds of thousands of deaths and more deaths to come for sure if we don't follow every single thing the public health officials say we should follow. Never mind that the public health officials contradict themselves on a daily basis or that they flip-flopped on everything since the very beginning. Never mind that. Just whatever they say today, do that. That's one narrative. And then the other narrative is we've never had the real facts on this thing. We've never really gotten the virus uh, successfully isolated. The testing doesn't work. There are hundreds of thousands, millions possibly of false positives. The contact tracing is a failure. Um, masks, masks are hurting more than they're helping. Lockdown has destroyed the economy. We need to end it right now. S children are not at risk and schools should open as normal. Those are the people on the other side of the narrative. And there's tons of experts on that side. It's just that if you're only following the mainstream media, you probably didn't get to see any of them at all. So I just today, I have assembled some things. This is by no means comprehensive, and my examples are probably not even the best examples. Oh, they're pretty good. They're so pretty good, Polly. So informed consent, to me, is a problem. It's a phrase with problems that we have to really think about. And I want to show you this clip of Bill Gates. She says we can't have You don't have consent. a choice. People act like you have we a choice. We don't know the truth. People don't feel like going to the stadium. Uh, when they might get infected. You know, it, it's not the government who's saying, okay, just ignore this disease. And, you know, people are deeply affected by seeing these deaths, by knowing they could be part of the transmission chain and, you know, old people, uh, their parents, their grandparents could be affected by this. And so you don't, you know, you don't get to say, uh, ignore uh, what's going on here. There, are, there will be the ability, particularly in rich countries, to open up if things are done well over the next few months. But for the world at large, normalcy only returns when we've largely vaccinated the entire global population. And so where does informed consent come in here? Where does informed consent come in with that vaccine if he admits that most people are too scared or too shamed or too guilty to go out and enjoy their lives as normal. And the only relief from that will be a vaccine. Is that informed consent? See how they flip it around? 
Bill Gates also warns us that this is just pandemic number one. We don't seem to be behaving during this one, but wait for number two. We'll behave then. Listen. And so they moved a lot faster. Uh, so we, you know, we'll have to prepare for the next one. That, you know, I'd say is, uh, we'll get attention this time. That most of the work we're going to do to be ready for pandemic two, I, I call this pandemic one. Super creepy when you consider. The Global Preparedness Monitoring Board, which was co-sponsored by the World Bank and the World Health Organization, put this document out in late 2019. And here's what they had to say. Progress indicators by September 2020. They want the United Nations, including the WHO, the WHO, to conduct at least two system-wide training and simulation exercises, including one for covering the deliberate release of a respiratory lethal respiratory pathogen. So add that together with Bill Gates and his, I call this pandemic number one. There's going to be pandemic number two. Yeah, by September 2020. Tick tock, it's coming. How are you getting the feeling that they're going to ramp it up again? Well, we're seeing the increased lockdowns. We're hearing rumblings of a new strain. By the way, the Global Preparedness Monitoring Board here that put this together, guess who's on the board? Anthony Fauci and people from Bill and Melinda Gates, the Wellcome Trust. This guy is China's CDC. Let's replace that one lady with Christine Grady. And here's some usual suspects for you. These guys, pictured here, make tons of money and gain tons of control if the pandemics go through. General Pompeo, he said, we are in a live exercise. That was at one of the press conferences. Thanks for watching today. My computer doesn't really have the juice to do this quite as well as I want to. So if you would like to donate to this channel, I can give you a means to do that in the video description. Whether you do or not, thank you for watching Lee TV.